It's super fun to buy all the thrifted things I'm gonna paint. And today I'm going to be painting all the things. So watch me as I transform all of these thrift store finds and turn them into decor that we sell on our shop and at jamierayvintage.com. Let's get started. I have separated everything out like I always do, just like in cooking, mise en place is imperative when you're working on thrifted finds. You've gotta get all the first coats on, things that need to dry longest going, and get the ball rolling, because if you can break things out, you can make more money in less time. First things first, I've gotta mix up my salt wash layer that'll be going on the items on this side of my island. DIY Prairie Gray is all natural, a clay-based paint, and pairs very well with salt wash. The ratio is supposed to be one to one for salt wash, but I wind up doing two parts paint to one part salt wash most of the time because DIY paint is so thick, you just don't need a ton of it. Look, that's what it looks like when you're mixing up. And you can add as little or as much. The other thing that's nice about the DIY paint and salt wash mix is if you have something super shiny, it really makes that paint stick well. Add a little bit more. If you ever get too much salt wash, you can add more paint or just add a little bit of water and that'll change your consistency. That's what it's gonna look like. I paid $2 for this and I'm gonna make it worth $24.95. To apply the salt wash, I just like to get it on and then I can add texture as needed. This is just a base layer, so full coverage isn't necessary. I think I'm just gonna go kind of a spun look. So just back and forth like this kind of make it look more like pottery, which I guess it is, it's ceramics. It's just 1980s. This piece here has a big crack in it and I glued that back together and I'm just gonna use salt wash to cover up the crack and add some texture to it. Just removing the stuff that was kind of already coming off anyways. And then I will add IOD molds to this and also to this piece. And I'm gonna put some molds on this piece and then we'll let that glue set up for a little bit. This will probably wind up eventually getting salt wash over it, but we gotta get the molds on there first. Ta-da! Now she's ready for molds and paint. Okay, so we're gonna get started on this tote. It was $1.50. And I'm just going to use the Fleur de Lis mold from IOD. You can buy any of the paint products, including this mold at jamierayvintage.com. When I get started with molds, I like to use a little bit of cornstarch so that way my IOD air dry clay will come out easily um, and the less resistance you have to releasing it, the better impression you're going to get. So I'm just gonna roll up my clay. This is the best clay on the market. I love it. If you've ever used Play-Doh, it's much like that. It just molds so easy. It's not hard to work with, it's not sticky. The biggest thing is you wanna make sure that when you're using this clay, that you're not leaving it out to dry. So I will take my pack along with any excess clay and I will zip it up in a Ziploc bag. If it ever gets dry, just throw a baby wipe in there and that will help. If you don't use your paper clay often enough, you can also double Ziploc bag it because keeping the air out is imperative because air is what makes the clay dry. One of the things I like is this micro rim. You just kind of pull the clay against the rim and then you get a great impression without a lot of effort. I'm just gonna take some wood glue. This is tight bond too. You can also use quick and thick. I've got plenty of time because while this is drying, I'm gonna go help Zeb at the church. So I'm not really in that big of a hurry. And I can lay this flat so it's not gonna fall off. So this little mold's gonna go right here. Make sure it's centered. Goes over this way a little bit. We'll let this dry, and then this will be ready for paint and wax. I'm gonna add molds to two more pieces, and then I'm gonna move on to my items that just need a coat of paint. I use the same IOD mold to create this look. It looks a little wonky now, but once painted, it's gonna be really good. On my shoe vase, I wound up just doing one fleur de lis right here, kind of like a tassel. I'm gonna leave it as is, and then this will get painted. I have a bunch of projects that are gonna be going in DIY's White Swan. Some of them are base coats. These will get decoupaged, and some of them are just gonna be getting painted white. So we're gonna get this color out and get these done. One of my favorite things to find is embossed tin especially in dark colors, because all you have to do is paint it in a lighter color, wet distress back to the original color, and it just looks so good, and it's a simple, quick flip. I paid a dollar for this, and I'm gonna sell it for $14.95. With 
this star is gonna be the one item painted red. Everybody always gives me a hard time saying I only ever paint blue, green, white, gray. So now I'm painting red. I'm gonna be using DIY's Carnival Red and a small brush because it's a little project and if you've ever tried to clean red out of a big brush, it looks like something died. So since this is little, the little brush is gonna work great. So I'm gonna be using DIY's Farm Fresh and I'm gonna paint the detail on this. Then I'm gonna come back with white and give it a two-tone look. So I think it's gonna be really pretty. And then I've got a few other things that are gonna go farm fresh as well. It's a really great duck egg blue. One of my favorite colors for things that I want to look a little bit feminine, but not too like over the top is French millinery. It is a purple gray color and it's gonna look great on this Victorian shoe. The last thing uh, coming in is this rooster gonna be painted in weathered wood. This is the last color I'm introducing. I love to do weathered wood and white wax. It really brings out the texture and makes it look not like resin and it makes it look like stone. So we've got first coats on everything. We're just gonna let it dry for about an hour or so and then we'll be ready for distressing, waxing, second coats, um, and maybe even some decoupage on those tints. Now that this has dried, I'm gonna go ahead and come back and add some detail with a small brush and white paint. I'm just going to flip it upside down and paint here and paint here, paint all this detail and the little dots, and then I'll wet distress and it'll be ready for wax. Two-toning something is a really great way to bring out all the detail and just make it look a little fancier. Because we're wet distressing, I don't really have to worry about perfection. Also, <laughs> I will take the tag off and paint this underneath while it's upside down too. The nice thing is this is metallic underneath. So when I wet distress, we'll get some of that metallic and that'll add an extra layer to our piece. Okay, so now that this piece is done, it's got a little touch up, but I'll let the white dry. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on these boxes. I'm going to just paint this top rim white and I might white dry brush this handle on this one. And then I think I'm gonna do some stencils on top. And then this one is gonna get a handle on top. Um, I need to see what we have. If I don't have anything here, I'll just grab something from the shop, but then these will be done and ready for wax after that. Now I'm just gonna come in here and stencil some numbers on these drawers because it's cute. And I have just painted the handles white. It's cute and ready to go. I'm gonna let these dry and then this will get distressed and clear waxed. I'm gonna come back with white and I'm just gonna dry brush this rooster to bring out some of the detail. So you want most of your brush to have the paint wiped off and you just come through and bring that out. And now everything that was just kind of hidden by the one single color is coming out. You can do this or you can do like a white wax, but if I do this, then all I have to do is clear wax and done. And if any of you guys have ever buffed something with this much detail, a white dry brush is so much easier. But next I'm gonna stencil this little sheep. I need y'all to say a little prayer for me because I'm not that great at stenciling on curved surfaces. So Zeb's busy at the church and it's all me, so we'll see what I can do. I'm gonna let that dry, and then we are going to let these all sit for a couple of hours before we wax. Now we're to the fun wet distressing part. Um, I've already wet distressed this candle stick, so you can kind of see the detail that's on here. It turned out pretty good. So all you have to do when you're using DIY paint or milk paint um, is use water before it's sealed and it will take the paint off. If you're using a different brand or spray paint or wall paint, it's not gonna work the same. And you wanna make sure your rag is pretty wet. I made it into the video today. I'm not doing demo right now. I've got the newsprint decoupage paper and my tins, cause Jamie's like, hey, you gotta come do these. This was your idea, you gotta do them. So I've just got a strip cut out here that wraps all the way around. I'm gonna decoupage this on and then probably sand the edges a little bit. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the tops quite yet. I may just do a better coverage of white on here and then drill a knob through the middle and put a knob on the top of that. I've got DIY liquid patina here and just gonna do a good coat. We painted the can white so that that 
kind of hides the red polka dot pattern that was underneath. And it's gonna also brighten up the paper. If you want your papers to be bright and crisp looking, do a white or a light colored background color. If you want them to be a little more uh, moody, do something darker underneath. Make sure I get this on here right side up. That would be tragic. <laughs> and they got a little bit of overlap. That's fine, most labels do. I've been wanting to do this for a while with this paper. So I'm glad I finally just bit the bullet and did it. We'll let that dry up and then do a little distressing on that. Using DIY white wax, and I'm just getting down in all the molds, all the cracks, because sometimes when the clay dries, it kind of pulls away from your surface, especially if it's curved. So if you shove wax into all those cracks, it will fill them in and you won't have that separation. You can also add extra paper clay and repaint, but ain't nobody got time for that. So this is all gonna get white wax. I'll rub it back and then I'll decide if I wanna add dark wax. Now I'm just gonna wipe back this white wax and you're gonna see all these molds coming back and the detail on my mannequin. This is where I do prefer paper clay over resin because you get cracks in the molds and it looks more authentic as opposed to like a plastic look you get from resin. Next, we're bringing out clear wax. I'm just using Sweet Pickens beeswax. You could also use DIY clear wax and I'm just sealing these up. You'll notice when I wax it, it gets darker. And after about 24 hours, that will calm down to the color it's gonna be. So if you're ever waxing and it's a little splotchy, you could always try adding more wax, but also wait a day and see if it calms down. The most important thing is nice, even coats of wax and then giving it a minute because the clay paint really soaks it up and then it has to dry and then you get the color it's gonna be. Pro tip. This could smear, so I'm going to clear wax the whole thing, and then I'll come back and do the sheep. So I'll kind of just wax around the sheep. It's okay if you get on it. And then I will come back once that's clear waxed and wax the sheep because this paint is super pigmented and until it's cured, it could smear. And just wax this sheep. And before I do any buffing, I'm gonna let that sheep cure up really good. If I took this brush and went <laughs> then all this is gonna smear. But since I wax the rest, then wax the sheep, let it sit, and then you can buff. But even when you buff, wax, buff the rest, then buff the sheep. So I'm gonna go four and three quarters for the center. I'm gonna be using golden rule to finish off a few of my pieces. It's a gold gilding wax, and you can just highlight the tops and bring out that detail. It adds a little something extra without being too difficult. Sometimes I wipe it back, sometimes I don't. I think I'm gonna do it on this cute little French mold here, and then again on the big chunky candlestick that I got upset at and painted in from fresh. Thank you for joining us. We did over 20 spring thrift store flips for profit. I think they turned out pretty good. And I used a few other colors than blue, green, or white, purple and red. So if you've been the one asking me to do more colors, there you go. So I designed this decoupage paper for the canisters specifically with this project in mind. It took me six months to get it done, but I really like the results. I think I'm gonna do it a lot more. There's gonna be a lot more tin cans in our future. I really feel like the finishing is the key. So if you guys are doing it for your own home or flipping, don't forget the decorative waxes and finishes and the two-tone dry brush. Like that's what brings these from beginner projects to really looking like high-end home decor. If you wanna create your own projects, visit jamierayvintage.com. A few of these aren't sold yet, so I'll drop those below in the links. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. I've been trying my best for a while Trying to please everyone who's around me I've been putting on my fake smile Even though I'm wasting time I don't want to be trapped in a box Trying to be like the rest, but I'm not. I just wanna go my own way. Gonna let the past burn down. I'm gonna leave it all behind. Find myself, I'm gonna start with a new. Yeah, I'm on a